Hello everyone, and welcome to Drupal and Panels. Today I get to share with you my favorite module in all of Drupal, and that's the Panels module. But before I start to show you all the great things you can do with Panels, I'd like to explain a little bit why the Panels module is necessary. The Panels module allows you to define custom layouts and displays of content for your site. The way this problem has traditionally been solved in Drupal is by allowing you to define specific regions in your theme and then allowing you to add different blocks into those regions. On this site, you can see I'm using the Bartik theme. And if I wanted to know what regions were available to this Bartik theme, I could do that from the Blocks Administration page. So this is under Structure, Blocks. And at the top of this page, there's a link that says Demonstrate Block Regions. If we click on that link, we can see the regions that are available to the Bartik theme. From looking at this page, you can tell there are a lot of regions. And there's a good reason for that. This system assumes that you want the same layout for every page on your Drupal site. As it turns out, most websites don't want the same layout on every page, and the only way that you can get this system to allow you to have different layouts for different pages is by defining different regions in your theme that are either used or not used based on page. I find that to be a fairly sloppy solution, and what I like to do instead is use the Panels module. Let's say, for example, our designer came to us and said she wanted us to use a custom two column layout for the home page of our website. We want a new article on the left hand side and we want a giant advertisement on the right hand side. If we look at this layout and we compare it to the regions that are available to the Bartik theme, it doesn't look like there's a very easy way to get that content to display. It turns out there is an easy way and all you need to do is use the panels module. So I'm going to go to the modules page. I'm going to turn on panels and two additional modules. The two other modules I'm going to turn on are both in the chaos tools suite one of them is the C tools module. This is a module panel depends on. And the other one is the, is the page manager module. So I'm going to turn on C tools, page manager, and of course the panels module itself and click save. Once these modules are turned on, you'll notice that there will be a new link under your structure section of your menu called panels. We're going to visit that page and we're going to use a wizard to walk us through building our first panel. On the left hand side where it says create new, we're going to click the link for panel page and walk through creating a new custom layout for our home page. The first things we're going to define are the administrative title, we're going to call it front page, an administrative description, also front page, and the path for our page. You'll also notice there's a checkbox right here that allows us to make this your site home page. It's exactly what we want to do, so we're going to go ahead and check this box and click continue at the bottom of the page. The second step of our wizard has us choose the layout for our new page. So since our designer said we need to do a two column layout, we're going to change the category to columns two and look at the two column layouts that are provided for us by panels. The one we want is this one on the left, just a very simple left right column layout. We're going to click continue. The third option is our settings for this panel. On this page, the only thing that's of interest to us right now is this Disable Drupal Blocks and Regions checkbox. And what this will do is prevent the content in our left sidebar from appearing on our homepage. We're going to go ahead and click Continue, the bottom of this page. And now you'll see a wireframe layout of what our content will look like. We've got a gray box indicating the left, a gray box indicating the right, and a little area at the top where we can define the title. As it turns out, I don't want a title for my homepage, so I'm going to change the title settings to no title. And now you'll see the text box for title has disappeared. We're going to go ahead and add some content to the page here. On the left hand side, we add content by clicking the cog wheel at the top left of the left hand side region. And the first option in that drop down is add content. So we'll choose to add content. And when the add content screen opens, you'll see a bunch of categories on the left hand side. What you see here by default are all of the blocks that are available to you via the blocks interface also reorganized and available to you in the panels interface. So everything that you should normally have access to, you can reach through panels. We're going to go ahead and add a block that we've already created. This block is an add. So under custom blocks, we'll find one here called add and we'll drop it into the page. It gives you some configuration options for how you want your ad to display. In this case, it's just asking us if we'd like to override the title or if using the title advertisement is correct. We're going to leave it as advertisement and click finish, and it'll drop that content into our wireframe on the page. We're going to do the same thing on the right hand side, but instead of adding 
add, which was a block. We're going to add an existing piece of content. So we're going to choose the add content link in the drop down. And in the overlay that opens up, there's another type of content we can add at the bottom called existing node. So we're going to click on the link for existing node. And now it'll let us enter in the title or node ID of a piece of content. So if we happen to know the title of the piece of content, you'll notice there's a nice little autocomplete here that'll help us find it. And after we've added the piece of content, we can also decide how we would like it to display. The most important configuration on this page is this build mode down at the bottom, where it says, would you like to see a teaser? We could also change this to be the full content. In this case, I think a teaser makes sense. And since we've left the build mode here to be teaser, we can also leave this box checked, which will include links for add, comment, or read more. If we decided to show the whole piece of content on the front page, it might not make sense to leave links here to read more. We're also going to check this box to link the node title to the node, and that will allow the title of the piece of content shown on the page to link to the rest of the piece of content. We're going to go ahead and click Finish, and that content will be dropped into the right-hand side of the page. The best part about panels is its drag and drop ability. We can click on any piece of content and drag it into any region on the page. This makes a lot more sense for anyone who's used to dragging and dropping layout builder tools. So here now we've got our content on the left and our ad on the right, just like our designer asked. Now we can go ahead and click the finish button. And on the next page, you'll see your panel in the page manager interface. For the most part, we're going to come back and visit a lot of these options later. For now, all you need to remember to do when you get to this interface is to click save. And there's two ways to do it. There's an update and save button in the middle of the page. And there's also a save button at the bottom left. As long as you click the save button, your work is complete. And you can go back to the home page of your site and check out your new two column layout. This is really great. But using the page manager interface can be overwhelming. Using the panels wizards can be overwhelming to some of your users. And sometimes you just want to let them edit the content right on the page. As it turns out, there's a module for that. So if we go back to the modules page, panels provides a module called the in place editor. It's in the same group as the panels module. And we're going to turn on the in place editor. We're going to click save. And after this module is enabled, we can go back and edit our existing panel. My favorite way to edit existing panels is to use the contextual administration link that appears on the page. It'll be in the top right hand side of your panel area. You click on the cogwheel and you get an edit panel link. You click on the edit panel link and you get returned to exactly the correct place in the page manager interface. Now that we're here, we're actually going to change something that's not related to the display of this content. What we're going to change is the renderer that's used to display this page. And that's controlled under the general category on the left hand side. So we're going to click on general. And now that we're here, we're going to check on the renderer settings. By when we first set up this panel, the only option that was available here to us was standard. But now that we've turned on the in place editor module, there is a new renderer called the in place editor, which we're going to select. So we're going to select that, update and save our panel, and return to the front page to take a look at it. Now that the in-place editor is turned on, you'll notice a new black bar at the very bottom of the page with a button in it that allows you to customize this page. We can click on this button, and now the content of the actual page becomes editable. So now you can drag and drop your content into different places on the page. You can drag, and in addition to rearranging content, you can also change the way that it's configured. So if you wanted to delete a panel pane, you could do that. If you wanted to change the way it looks, there's a style palette where you can choose, for example, you want this advertisement to have rounded corners. You can also change the configuration options. So if you decided you wanted the title to be changed, you can do that too. All of these changes happen real time in the page so you can see what they actually look like. And when you click save, all of your changes become permanent. This is the kind of interface that anyone who's building a website can wrap their head around. They'll understand exactly what they're doing, and it'll be very intuitive and friendly for them to use. This is a definite improvement over the custom coding you would need to do to add custom regions into your theme and the administration that needs to be done in order to add blocks into those regions. I hope that you like what you've seen about panels so far. You'll continue watching this series because there's lots more I'd like to show you. Thanks a lot.